I am Dracula. I bid you welcome. Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Thou shalt rise again. Power to make multitudes run squealing in terror at the touch of my little invisible finger. Do you believe in werewolves? To a new world of gods and monsters. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Ken and I's countdown of the Universal Horror box set. And Ken, I think we're at the mid, we're, we hit the midway point last, on the last episode, I think. Halfway through, baby. And uh, the, <laughs> starting the second half, not off to a good start. Um, not strong. Son of Dracula. Okay, I will just start by saying it. I, I was not impressed and I really didn't like this movie. <laughs> I'm just going to say the worst part about this movie is Lunch Angel Jr. is not a good Dracula. He has the look, but he doesn't do anything that makes my him issue, stand out as Count Dracula. My, my issue with it is, like, Bela Lugosi is like an exotic person, you know? Lon Chaney Jr., I just feel like, is sort of just an all-American, like, almost John Wayne type of actor is, who is just not for a role like this. Mm. No, and it's just... <laughs> okay, so with some of these older movies, obviously there's a lot of things where we're just kind of like, you know, I don't, you know... The story doesn't really flow perfectly, I guess. Mm-hmm. But with this movie, I have no idea what they were doing. I have no well, idea what this story was. I'll be honest with you. The story around... Uh, also, I don't know, is he Dracula? Is he the son of Dracula? Because they just refer to him as Dracula. They refer to him as Dracula, but he's listed as Dracula in the credits. It said Lon Chaney Jr. as Dracula. And I was like, I was oh, like, Dracula, isn't that a, fa- is that a family name? I, I have no idea. So I, I, and I'm watching it now. I, I like saw that in the credits. I was like, oh, so like what is like Dracula's son going to like fight Dracula at some point? And then like, Announce Count Alucard. I'm like, but that's Lon Chaney Jr. They said he was Dracula, but now he's Alucard. And then I'm like, what was the point? At the end of the well, day, I think, the biggest issue with this movie is what was the point of it? It didn't I think, do anything new. I think Alucard was just sort of like a name he was going by to like disguise himself, um, which you probably but, shouldn't do no, no <laughs> make because it just your name backwards so then but then here comes my next question who was he then i think he was just dracula disguising was he just himself a dracula but they tried to connect they tried tying it back to bella lugosi's dracula so it's like who is this chad Ch- 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 shock of shocks this movie isn't very smart <laughs> no it's not <laughs> no i will say really I, what not. i meant to say earlier was the movie around him I don't think is as bad, but like you said before, really it's just because it's just a rehash of the first movie. Yeah. And n- nobody nobody really dies. It takes place in the bayou, which is which could be an interesting sit- setting, but they don't do anything with it. But aside why? from like See, that's the weird thing is it's like they're they has to be some form of a reason. In the original Dracula, it, like he was getting out of Transylvania. He, I mean, New Orleans? Yeah. Didn't they try and say the chick Catherine knew him? So, how? How would she have known someone from Transylvania? Yeah. I... The first 10 minutes, I'll put it this way, the first 15 minutes of this movie, I was confused. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. I, I might not have a lot to say about this one. Just, sorry? I was like, so they're at some random guy's house who smokes a cigar and dies. <laughs> and she's like, then Dracula shows up. And then he's like, announce Count Alucard. And she's like, oh, okay, come on in. The guy's like, okay, come on in. And then the scene ends and they're like, oh yeah, Alucard, Drac- Alucard came in, but then he left right away. I was like, what was the point of that? What was the point of any of that then? Because he like said, I am here. They're like, oh, the master of the house has died. We're not seeing anyone tonight. He's like, let me in. And they're like, okay. They're like, see, they're all, oh, he a just lot. Left. I'm like, what is, 
This is a, a bad, bad script. A lot of this movie, I feel like, is just meandering about. Like, it doesn't know what it wants to accomplish, and it just sort of feels like it's just sort of, yeah, meandering about. They, like, try to build up the whole somewhat of a mystery with Frank maybe being guilty, but it's like, we, we know she's a vampire, and or she's the undead or whatever. And yeah. He, go ahead. Uh, also, uh, I well, I can say one positive for this movie. Um, I think visually it looks really good. There's some cinematography where I think the lighting looks really good. And I think some of the effects are kind of cool, like with Dracula turning into mist, which is something we've never seen in any other movie at this point. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. It just so felt like... effects-wise and cinematography, I think, looks good. But that's like... <laughs> that's like polishing a turd. It's like, eh, it's still a turd. Yeah, and just like, okay, like Brewster himself, he was just a poor man's version of Van Helsing. Yes, agreed. Actually, the only interesting character was the uh, was the Hungarian guy. Yes. <laughs> Who was more like, exotic than Dracula was in this right? movie. He was like the only character that I was like genuinely interested in. I'm like, Look at this. I was like, they're getting like the, the expert in to come help them. But then they didn't really do much with it either. And I'm like, oh, that guy should have been like the main character almost. I, I really feel like, I don't know why. I don't know why they went with Lon Chaney for this. Because um, the actress who played Dracula's daughter, I thought she was like, not quite as great as Bela Lugosi, but still very exotic and very interesting you know yep lon cheney is just like like i said sort of this all-american actor the only thing i can imagine is just like i feel like the studio is just like hey lon do you want to just fill out the the whole roster of monsters i mean you've been the month you've been the frankenstein monster you've been the wolfman the mummy you want to just be dracula at this point i mean he was the only one he's the only one that's that's played them all yeah and it just he just didn't do it. He didn't make it his own, it felt like, because he just wasn't very no. compelling as... But, I mean, in all honesty, nobody in this movie. I mean, Doc, Dr. Brewster, I'll give it. The guy was all right. The chick who played Catherine, fine. But the guy who played Frank, I did not like him as a main character at all. I thought he was yeah. bland and nothing to him. And it's like, I felt... I kind of felt bad for... It's like, in a way, I felt bad for him because he said he loved Catherine. But it's like, then you hear... I remember earlier in the movie, they were like, characters were like oh yeah, she was never going to marry him anyways. I'm like, well, I, now I almost feel bad for him, not because like his love is gone, but because she wasn't going to marry him anyways. And it's like, <laughs> move on. Yeah. Buddy, but Everyone, aside from the cinematographer and the special effects people, I think everyone was just phoning this one in. Which is sad because it's like another one where we were saying this being a rehash. I mean, in a sense, a rehash of the original Dracula. Why didn't they do something new with this? They did something completely new and way more creative with Dracula's daughter. That's what I was hoping with this. I was hoping this was going to be like the actual son of Dracula or something being like, even if it was like not action packed, something like, you know, my father is destined to rise from the grave and I need help right. from you people to keep him there permanently and or something like a half vampire, like Dracula's daughter or something. But they went with like this such a bland, useless idea. Yeah, it's just it wasn't interesting. And what you just said, like that could have been very interesting. And I mean and then his name could have actually been Alucard, which could, because like the Castlevania games, Dracula's son is named Alucard, and mm-hmm. I, I don't know, but that's Castlevania that's games did a better job with the character yes, of Yes, they did. That's what I'm saying. It's just this movie is basically alive. There is no son of Dracula. There's no just it's a sham, Chad. Which is weird. Why they even go with son of Dracula if Alucard was just. Uh, 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 like you said, just like he was hiding himself by a different name. Was it, it should have been like the, the return o- of Dracula. Right. Or... Was it to fool the aunt? Yeah, son of Dracula. That, that's another thing I think 
Because a film title can work against a movie and help bring a movie down. Same as, mm-hmm. you know, a movie trailer that lies to you can bring a movie down. But it's like, I see you know. Son of Dracula, and I'm expecting a Son of Dracula, not Dracula somehow resurrected. Not mm-hmm. even, I'll even take Which They something. didn't even explain well, did they? No, they didn't, ex- I don't remember them explaining it at all. It's like we talked about two episodes ago with the Wolfman coming back. This one, it's like, so is this Count Dracula? Bela Lugosi's Count Dracula? Because if it is, you kind of need to give us a little more than absolutely nothing. Nothing. How he came back. Like, at least even the Mummy movies do that. The Frankenstein movies do that. With this, I, I don't even know what they were truthfully going for with this film. Yeah. Well, so I, I, I got to ask you, because before we started recording, it, it seemed like it was your least favorite part. The very ending and what our monster is brought down to oh, at the end of this movie. His coffin's on fire and he's like shaking Frank and be like, put it out, put it. I'm like, like freaking out like a this child. This is our scary monster. Like at least in the, at least in the hammer Dracula films, when that Drac, when Christopher Lee starts to get scared, at least he still like looks threatening or mm-hmm. at least he still looks threatening here. Like you said, he just looks like a man in a costume having a tantrum. Yeah. <laughs> put um, it out, put it out. It's like, take off your cape and put it out yourself. Yeah, like, pat it down yourself. Like, I don't know, man. So here's a question I gotta <laughs> ask you, Matt. Here's something I gotta ask you, man. <laughs> um, so, which between... So it sounds like this is the, probably the second one in the series we are just flat out not recommending. Yeah. Which one did you like more, this or The Invisible Man Returns? Oh, geez. Um, oh. I think I prefer The Invisible Man Returns because the only reason I really didn't like that one is going into it, I thought it was something it wasn't. And I think as a spy espionage movie, it could at least work. This, I think, just fails on almost every front. Yeah, this was, yeah, th- this was pretty bad. Th- this, I, I don't, I just, I don't get what they were doing with this movie. They, they built it up like it was going to be something and then it wasn't anything. Like I said, I don't, did anyone even die? I don't think so. I think like they said that one farmer was, I mean, and then they're like, oh, he can go home because that's when yeah. they were questioning. They're like, oh, is he going to become a vampire? And they're like, no. Because he didn't drain all the blood, so he's not the undead. Yeah. I'm and, like, and the old man dies at the beginning, but it's like, oh, wow. Natural causes one, Dracula is zero in this movie. Right. They're like, oh, he looks like he. I love though. That didn't even make any sense. Oh, he frightened himself to death. I'm like, hold up. How was the shades on fire, but he was laying in the bed? Yeah. What did he throw the cigar at Dracula when he flew in the window? <laughs> yeah, this was not. I, 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 I would not. I mean, watch it if you're a completionist, but I. Yep. Th- th- you have no reason to watch this. I movie. won't be revisiting this one. No, I, I'm probably ever. I think the biggest reason this one I'd say is the worst is because I thought it was going to be good. Okay, no, I, okay, I, I thought it was going to give me a good concept. I thought, like I said, I thought it was going to be dealing with maybe a different type of story of Dracula's actual son, like we got with, the, with Dracula's daughter. But this was just, they, they didn't do yeah. anything. And it's like, okay. Which, which you said, Chad, it could, it could have been interesting the way you described it is just like if either... Alucard was sort of there just like foreboding and like saying my my father shall rise from the dead or like his legacy shall live on or something like that or if you went the opposite direction and he like hated his father and resented what he had done to him or something could have been way better than what they did here but just missed opportunity 
yeah, shame. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm glad I saw it at least once. I mean, you said Len Cheney Jr. tried. Yep, you tried. You gave it the old college try, but... (laughs) Yeah, it's maybe it's like you said. Maybe they were just... Maybe they were just banking on him. Yeah, you know, that's what I think it was. People. He he was the big name. He had played every other monster at this point. They were probably just like, hey, you want to do this one? It's just weird. Like, why do it if it's not... I, I don't know. I almost I almost want to do a little, like, actual... Um... I actually want to do a little uh, research on this and see, like, why why what what the concept behind the idea of this one was because like we said how do you i i understand dracula's daughter didn't wasn't as popular obviously as dracula but it's like mm, to play it completely safe like this uh that's that's the biggest issue they're rehashing it they're playing it safe and it just it's worse for it yeah it didn't it just didn't work it's unfortunate yeah, I I don't have a lot more to say about this one. Nope, and I don't want to sit and just rehash trash talk either. <laughs> because that's <laughs> not that's not fair. But hey, you know what? A- anyone listening, if you are a fan of this movie or you've got positives, uh, please tell us below. I I lo- I mean, if it's, the movie's not all terrible. I mean, it's, it, it's no. no, it's not total trash. Like I like I said, some I of the cinematography Catherine. is cool. Some of the cinematography is cool, and uh, some of the effects are cool. But yeah, and, it's style, not substance. And the problem was also it was like another thing we didn't bring this up, but like Catherine when she's going to Frank and she's like, "Oh, I tricked Dracula to make me immortal, so we can, you know, I want to make you immortal. We can be together forever." They didn't do anything with that either. They just kind of randomly dropped that scene in, and it's like, yeah, what, interesting okay, concept. Is she under mind control while saying this? It, it, is it, or is she actually that? Was she actually that forward thinking? Or mm-hmm. so it, it's like, but they didn't touch on it or do anything with it, and then the movie just ends with him. Okay, so it's like the, he spends the whole movie tells the sheriff I murdered her. Brewster's like, no, he didn't. And then at the very end, he just burns her anyways. And it's like, oh, well, now you're going to prison. Yep. Walked into a room where you lit her on fire anyways. So if there was ever any doubt that you didn't kill her, you just answered the question and you are going to prison now. Mm-hmm. But he looked so mentally broken at that point. He, they probably would have just thrown him into a loony bin anyway. <laughs> I will say his performance there was pretty good. That guy's performance there was pretty interesting. I did feel bad for him at that scene, though. When, but it's like, was she actually dead? Like, did she die when Dracula died? I don't know, man. Because I thought you didn't. I th- because the the um, what's her face in the original one didn't. She was oh, under Dracula. Mina. Yeah, Mina didn't. She was under Dracula's control, and then when he died, she was fine, wasn't she? That's true, but yeah, in this case, like the guy is like he he's so heartbroken because I guess she it was like a sacrifice of her life for whatever reason. I mean, like maybe I said, she like, died from being maybe like the wounds from being shot through Dracula. Mm. What they oh, really maybe maybe how did the bullets go through Dracula anyways? Maybe the bullets wounds like don't hurt her while she's a vampire, but once he dies. Yeah. And she's no longer a vampire. Then it again. We're really grasping at straws here. And once again, I don't think this movie is very smart, Chad. No, because you know what? There's <laughs> another thing. That's almost a concept you could do almost in a more modern day movie like that. You get shot, and it's like you, they could almost do a whole love story on that concept alone. Like her looking at him, being like, "I know you hate this Dracula guy. You you want to kill him for what he's done to me. But if you kill him, I'm going to die from the wounds from the bullets you shot into me." Yeah, dude, then you it becomes a massive like mental game of like I want to release her from his control, but then she's going to die because I shot her. So you're coming up with way smarter ideas than they were thinking <laughs> of at the time. But, well, you, it's funny because like back then they didn't have you know CGI or big flashy action scenes to cover up bad stories. And, I mean, I'm obviously you know bad stories have always been around, but it's like. You didn't always have special effects to fall back on as your excuse mm-hmm. for a bad film. It, you had to do your good, you had to give good writing. So it's like, 
I, I mean, like I said, there's always been bad films, but it's just stuff like that. It's like there was nobody creative on set to be like, we can do more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one is just, yeah, this is probably my least favorite so far. Yep, between this and Invisible Man Returns, those are, those are two I will not be returning to. <laughs> <laughs> and I give I give Invisible Man Returns a little bit of leeway because the main reason I didn't care for it is it wasn't what I thought it would be. Yeah, hey, same with this one. Didn't think I, I thought this was going to be more than what it was, and it just it was kind of nothing. Yeah. Uh, all I can really say is some of the cinematography and effects are cool, and that guy has a pretty decent. Uh, heartbreaking acting moment but aside from that it's it falls short and you're not missing anything by skipping it agreed absolutely and really you don't need it for the context of house of Dr- frankenstein and house of dracula exactly skip it you're, you're you'll be fine yep unless you're a completionist like we are but that's the only reason you'd have to watch it yep so the next episode is um this is, <laughs> this is a loaded year. So the next episode, Invisible Man's Revenge. Four Universal movies that year in 1944. Wow. Yeah. So Invisible Man's Revenge. Let's see how another Invisible Person movie goes. I think, I think this is the heaviest franchise so far. Invisible Man returns, Invisible Woman, Invisible Agent, and now Revenge. This and uh, Frankenstein, I think, are duking it out. Yep. Which so is far. funny because it's like before we started this, or I'll say before I bought this box set, I never knew there was this many Invisible Person movies. Me either. I thought there was one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. And I still haven't seen Invisible Man's Revenge, so it'll be... Neither have I. So this will be my first time watching this one. So, hey, first, first, first uh, reactions all around next episode. Yeah, so we'll see what we think. Fingers crossed it'll be good. Yeah, no kidding. I still don't think it's going to top the original or the Invisible Woman, though. Mm -mm. Invisible Woman is still one of the best of the underrateds, I think. Absolutely agreed. (laughs) I think we should do that episode at the very end where we rank all these things. It'll be a beast to do. It will, but but I I, I can do it. It'll take a while to put that list together, but I can do it. Yep. Cool. Well, there you go, everyone. In a couple, how long? A couple months, <laughs> we'll have that episode <laughs> out. <laughs> yep. Ranking all the Universal monster movies. That'll be a that'll be a challenge. It will be. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Like we said, if you enjoyed this, just tell us down below what you liked. Not in a, you know, oh look at you and you like a bad movie type way. But if, if there's stuff you thoroughly enjoy about it. Point it out. Let us know. Who knows? We might come back to it one day and watch it with the perspective you give, and we might like it more. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sorry, guys. This is Chad. See you soon. This is Ken. Take it easy, everyone. <laughs>